Who stepped up? Everyone stepped up. And that's how the Celtics get to win 124-113 to 113 in Chicago over the Bulls. Celtics post game live. Tom Giles, Eddie House. We're going to have Forsberg joining us later tonight. We'll hear from Drew and Scal as well. But, uh, Eddie, your thoughts on the Celtics and their ability to hang on and finish this one off against the Bulls? Yeah, they got it done. You know, and guys stepped up in, in, in moments where they needed to. Luke Cornett rebounding the basketball. We just highlighted that. Peyton Pritchard playing the way he's been playing. Uh, assisting the basketball, getting his teammates involved the last couple games has been phenomenal. The one thing I would say is that I know it's a back-to-back, -back, but I would like them to shore up the defense. You know, uh, Chicago nearly shot damn near 60% from the field. I mean, that's just a little too high of a number, but that's nitpicking. We still got the victory, but when you're trying to win a championship, you have to nitpick and you got to stop things before they start and, and, and become something that you can't stop. 57.3% uh, were the Bulls from the field. Yeah, that, that is, that's pretty good. But at the same time, Celtics still find a way to win this game by 11 points. Meanwhile, uh, let's head back out to the United Center. Abby Chin standing by with Al Horford. Al, this game was a battle. Chicago kept it close with their ball pressure. How did you guys finally get some separation and get the win in the fourth? Uh, I felt like we got a uh, great start in the fourth quarter. Uh, that unit that was sitting there really set the tone for us. And once we got in there, we were able to just close the game out. Three-pointers made the difference. You had five of them in this game. What is it like being on the floor, the way that you guys can spread and know that you are surrounded by elite shooters? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're running our offense with good pace. JT puts a lot of pressure on, on the defenses, as you can tell. And, uh, you know, we're beneficiaries. And I'm taking advantage, and I'm taking my shots. No question about it. Luke Cornett just passed by. A monster on the offensive board tonight. What kind of impact is he making on this team? Now, unbelievable. His energy, relentless on the glass. Key offensive rebounds, tap outs, putbacks. Um, he's doing everything for us down there. Finally, Al, you guys were without three starters. You win your ninth straight game. No matter who is on the floor, for this team. You guys have a great opportunity to win. What is so special about this group? Yeah, I think that's how Joe wants us to be, right? Be a team that um, anybody can come in with our system and we can kind of figure it out and make things happen. And our guys were really buying into it and, and we're, seeing, uh, we're seeing it with, with these wins and the way that we're playing. No question about it, Al. Thank you. Congrats. All right, let's bring in uh, Drew and Scal now. And uh, fellas, I guess once again, you got five guys scoring in double figures. Luke Cornett, 13 rebounds. And uh, they just keep finding new ways to win and a new way to win here with uh, the 57th of the season. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, like, tonight was Cornette's night. Like, him hitting the glass. He had a big load keeping Andre Drummond off the glass with the pressure he puts on the other side of the floor. And everything works in unison. It, it doesn't work for Jason Tatum if you don't have a guy that set a screen and roll to the basket, if you don't have space and have Al Horford in the corner or Sam Hauser. When you have those things, we become really tough to stop. And we should, it's, like we, it, we, it's average for Derek White to step up and knock down big threes in the fourth quarter, but we get used to it, but it's still not an easy thing to do, and Derek White lived through those moments. And it feels like forever ago at this point, but remember, the Celtics did miss their first four three-pointers of this game. So I'm sure there are a lot of people in their living room across New England. Oh, too many threes. Why do we always chuck these threes? Well, you see why, because I know four threes is not exactly a large sample, but the Celtics have won three games against the Bulls this year. They've swept the season series. They've made 20-plus threes in all of them. Joe talks about shot quality all the time and shot margin. They dominate both those categories, and they win again. And they had six points, I think, in the first five minutes, Eddie. Six points in the first five minutes, and then they ended up with 31 in the quarter. It, it felt like it could have been one of those nights, but then, then it wasn't. Yeah, but I, I want to ask Gal uh, something real quick. So, I... You know, I don't want to nitpick, but when you're trying to win a championship, you have to nitpick, right? Everything matters. The, the smallest of details, 57% from the field, that's a little bit too high. And was it something, what, what, what was the reason why they were able to ha uh, shoot 57% from the field? What was it that you were seeing out there? Because I, I just felt like everything was kind of like a, a count slow, a, a little bit late on things. I know it's a back-to-back, -back, but it's the small details that wins you championships. What was you seeing out there? 
exactly what you saw, Eddie. I think in the fourth quarter, we did go to a different level defensively, but for the first three quarters, I think I mentioned it a few times, and I don't know if it's because we were double big or anything like that. It just didn't feel like we had that same impact on the ball. And, you know, when you're shorthanded and on a back-to-back, -back, I can expect that, but it was really refreshing to see them at the end, you know, just rise up to a different level defensively. But, no, what you saw was correct. But, well, you know, like, it is a small sample size. It's just one game with a shorthanded roster. And Joe wanted to go double big in this in this game. So there's a lot of variables to that. I'm, I'm curious how we play in Atlanta, how we play in New Orleans, and really, more than anything, how we play against Oklahoma City coming up. Because to me, if you can guard that team, then you can guard any team in the entire NBA any night because they're, they're so aggressive driving the ball. All right. Uh, one last thing for you guys, because I feel like oftentimes when we talk about offensive rebounding, we talk about it as a negative. We, we never look at it the times when the Celtics are great on the offensive glass, but they were great on the offensive glass night. Luke Cornett had five offensive rebounds. O'Shea Brissett had another three. Uh, it's just how refreshing is it to see that side of things? I mean, it's a sacrifice when you're going to play double big, then you have to figure out, you know, where, where those shot margins are going to come from. So we did, we did pound the glass today. It was part of our – you know, our, the way we wanted to run offense, I think ultimately it did open up the three-point shot because people were cracking back. But uh, it's not something that you should bank on. It, it's nice to see, but it's not something that the Celtics look at that and say, this is where we're going to win a championship. It's something that's nice if you need it, like on a situation like this. And the Bulls are a good rebounding team, too. Very Ruchevich, good. Andre Drummond's one of the best rebounders of his generation. So for those guys to do what they did against this team, very impressive. All right, Drew, Scal, thank you guys so much. Uh, good luck traveling to Atlanta. We'll talk to you guys on Monday. Uh, meanwhile, Celtics get the win here. 124-113, so an 11-point win. 57-14 on the season, 43 games above 500. More Celtics post the game live coming your way after this.